What's up, everybody? Uh, I'm over here cooking dinner with hooks, rubs, and spices. Uh, B-Rob turned me on to this stuff, and i tell you what, it's great. It's a homemade blend of the finest ingredients sourced from Texas gardens, farmers, and markets. And it's some good shit. i tell you what, try the smoke and sweetness, or you can try Hoppy's favorite, the Mad Cow, which is a nice peppery slap in the face. <laughs> One taste, and you'll be hooked. Hooks, rubs, and spices. You are now listening to Random Ramblings with Rock. Yay. Yay! If you like hanging out at Walmart, if you like hanging out in the aisles, if you like talking random stuff, Random Ramblings with Rob. Uh. Random Ramblings Links with Rob. Yo, yo. Random Ramblings Links with Rob. Walmart talking, we're random, we're random, we're random, we're random, robbing to rob, 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 rob. <laughs> what up, everybody? This is your boy B Rob, and I'm back with another edition of the Random Rounds with Rob podcast. First and foremost, I'd like to thank you, the listener, for coming back each and every week or however you listen to podcasts. If you're a first time listener, I want to tell you thank you. I appreciate you for taking a chance on me and if anybody recommended you to me, uh, if you're in their vicinity, give them a crisp high five, you know. But if you're not in their general vicinity, use your favorite social media app of choice to send them that also pleasant DM to let them know that you appreciated that recommendation and whatnot. Or shit, hell, tell them that you didn't appreciate the recommendation. I don't know. Do you just have some correspondence with, with the person that recommended you to me? And um, speaking of social media. You can follow the show on social media as well, where you can follow it on Twitter at 3R Show. And you can follow it on Instagram, just using the hashtag 3R Show or hashtag Walmart Log. So you can see me walking around Walmart doing what I do. And there's a Facebook page. Just search the show's name. And you can find all kind of other stuff on randomrobcast.com. Now, got all the formalities out of the way. Quite an intro. Yeah, I know. It's a mouthful, man. I, I, I lose my breath sometimes. You that. But as you heard, I have a guest with me this uh, evening as we record. Um, one person that has eluded me for quite some time. Um, a while back. <laughs> yo, yo. A while back, I had um. Everybody heard Anomaly. He he's been on here multiple times, especially he's like one of my co-hosts on Wrestling Is Trash, which you can find on Wrestling Is Trash. I heard about what y'all was doing there, dog. I'm digging it. I'm digging it. I was hoping he was into something, and it looks like y'all are tackling that together. Your co-host, yeah, that's what's up. So Anomaly has been here, and um, a while back also I've talked to uh, Mister Catastrophic. He was a guest on the show, or whatever. He had some projects going on at the time. But there's one out of the trifecta that I was missing. And we danced around. We danced around. We had even a couple difficulties up until we actually got on and started recording. But he is finally here. He is the one, the only, the infamous Rad. How are you, sir? What is up, brother? Yeah, I know. We, we, uh, we were tag teaming back and forth there for a minute. And I'm glad we finally got to do it. I'm glad we finally got it going here. Yeah. Well, I mean, one, because I, I come across you because of Anomaly and um, Mr. Catastrophic. Yeah, we're in a group together. Then from the society, brotherhood. Yeah, we're, and this is a key word there, where they're, uh, they, like you just said, Anomaly is doing his thing, kind of, uh, yeah, and, and, and I wish the best to both of them. Me and Zach still kind of, uh, we, we bounce ideas and whatnot off each other. Uh, we just haven't been out performing and doing the thing as much you know uh all of us got families obviously and uh i'll never say the chris anomaly likes to look at it like we're giving up something i, I say you know we're, we're we got to proceed with life at the end of the day <laughs> you know i mean yeah as, as long as we as much as it would be awesome for music to pay the bills it don't and it's it, it, you gotta put in a lot of work to have it pay the bills full time so i shifted gears and started selling music gear for a long time uh and just kind of stuck with the family thing and whatnot but uh i've been talking to zach hopefully me and him's gonna get something going for this project i got open here uh he hasn't really dropped anything that i've seen in, in a while i've been probably the most active of the three as far as in in the music industry realm 
Yeah. Now, it, it, like I said um, just a few moments ago, I, I, I come across you because of them. You know, you were together. You did music and whatnot. But um, as I've been keeping track of you and everything, um, I, I, I've noticed you've been doing a thing on um, the TikTok app or whatever the fuck that <laughs> is. Did you see that? Yeah, yeah. man. Now, I, I, I have questions. I have questions. So, sure. I don't know what the fuck it is. I know it's vine like in nature from what I've seen of it and whatnot, but like all the effects and everything when you make your videos and whatnot, is that something you do within the app or is something you do outside of the app and import in both essentially. And that's kind of what made my, my first thing that turned me on to TikTok Cause I was doing it. Now it's become more than a fad dude. It's like beyond trending. Cause now even, Distro kid, I'll put your music on TikTok because it's a, such a becoming such a high social platform and in a comparison with Instagram, Facebook, and all that good stuff. TikTok's now a, a player in the market uh, it, because they had a great idea. It's not you, you record, you stop record, record, stop, record, stop, record, stop, and whatever you can think of in the sense of of, of recording a split second, stopping, and then picking back up and recording. And how you can mix that. And there's so many way, angles. I, at first, it just seems like, okay, record, stop. But you see some of the things some of these folks do, man. And it's so creative. And I, I just love I love the creativity behind it. The app has effects built into it. And you record it on the app. Now, what you see as far as if you're seeing it get to the level of VFX, visual, like professional visual effects, or even sometimes corny ass, <laughs> a lot of corny ass uh, visual effects, uh, that's when they're making it in the app. Or they could be just using their camera mode or something like, you know, just recording it on their phone. But they usually will make, I usually anyways, me personally, I would record it in the app, a.k.a. record, stop, record, stop, do everything I'm doing, save it, edit it on uh, if I needed it to put it in something else and then upload it back into TikTok. Yes, you can upload any video to TikTok. I could click upload and upload to something I made without TikTok. But it is uh, the, their idea. They want you to record it in the app and that's what you can. It's, it's start, there's a lot of other uh, players. As there's one called Like, L-I-K-E, just Like, uh, Funimate. There's one uh, that's kind of trying to be, it's called Noise, N-O-I-Z-Z, and all of them are the same concept, the little video social apps. But the other ones had the corny effects. TikTok was very minimalistic in what it packed into the app. It was not real heavy. It did not have a million and one effects. It had five, and it had a few filters. Now when I log on there, it's just like, man, it's so bloated with just just dumb shit, really, stuff you'll never use. But it has some really cool stuff. I recommend anybody download TikTok. First thing you do is follow Infamous Rad, I-N-F-A-M-O-U-S-R-A-D, follow me, and then look at my stuff, like every single... No, I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you're not just but, playing. You're supposed to do that. <laughs> follow me, no doubt. And... uh Overall, you can re anybody can record it. Some fun shit. They've got thirty second, uh, thirty second videos now, so you can make them a lot longer. Uh, and I, again, I, I, the intrigue. What intrigued me about it was just how creative you could truly be when it comes to a start, stop, start. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. record and stop and see where you stop that. Take a screenshot of it. Put it on another device, dude. It takes some time to do what some of these kids are doing on TikTok, and it was almost a challenge. I got somewhat okay at it. And after, and I invested a lot of money, man. I got a ring, a two hundred dollar ring light sitting beside me. I'm glad I got it because it, <laughs> it's very useful in other mediums too. But uh, TikTok's a shit, no doubt. You, anybody can make a name. There's a lot of kids on there. But there's a lot. There's you know, it's all. It's becoming so big that again, it's all you know, diversities and ages. So yeah, get on there. Follow with Miss Rad. Rob's going to have an account by the end of the day, and he's going to make his I, first video. Everybody I go guess. check that out. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Cause, um, Getting big on there is a big thing. Uh, people get, damn, you're famous, you know, and then you see famous people going to TikTok on the flip side of that. So, yeah. Uh, but, like, um, what, what's some of the apps that you thought was going to go somewhere or had a potential, but they just kind of fizzled out. You, know, you can think of it. In general, like, like yeah, it, it, besides, you know, getting away from TikTok, other yeah, stuff yeah, that I've seen, general, man, yeah. Yeah, that's just, a good one. You know, my, uh, 
some of these music apps I'm using, man, are really blowing my mind, and some of them might not be so old, or as old, maybe. See, to me, TikTok is the success story. If you can get anything cracking like TikTok, and it wasn't always TikTok. It used to be Musical.ly. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what I thought, yeah. Cause, um, it was Musical.ly, TikTok bought them out, and that was uh, right. But I, I got on Musical.ly, TikTok bought them out within the first month or that I was real active on there, and that was a year ago this March. So you know, I, I was you know, I had my TikTok birthday to say. <laughs> your TikTok. Uh, other your- apps, man. Uh, oh, that's a good one. I know Tully, T U L L Y. I'm kind of watching it grow still, though. So uh, it's 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 an awesome app when it comes to. Uh, any creative writer or any creative songwriter specifically because I, you know I'm a, and I'm a real this is something me personally man but I love seeing people's workspaces like that's coming right up for me to ask you to let me see where you record your computer the way it's you know what I'm saying people's workspaces intrigue me and I, I, I like seeing studio setups office setups all that good stuff um, and the whole deal with Tully is I, everybody writes their songs differently, dude. Like some people, I used to type them in notepad on a computer because I could type as fast as I could talk, believe it or not. <laughs> <laughs> I got to remind myself not to talk qu- quick sometimes. Uh, but Tully, you op- you es- essentially open your beat, whatever beat you import into it, or it even comes with some free beats for those that ain't got, you know, this is just the first time, oh, I'm going to be a rapper today because that's how it seems to happen. Oh, guys wake up and decide what they're going to be a rapper. And- yeah. <laughs> I'm not, I mean, it happens, fuck. Um, but totally, it's just all in one spot, man. You don't have a notepad open and got to open the song in your, you know what I'm saying, in your audio player and have all this separate stuff going on. And totally, you have your beat that you import into it from Dropbox or any cloud or your phone. Uh, open that beat and your lyrics pop right up. You can record sample, like if you got an idea or a melody you don't want to forget, you can record audio into it. Um, it's really and I, I the re, as far as it getting big and didn't I think it's still in the process of getting big. Uh, I don't think Tully is that new. Really, Joiner Lucas probably made it hot because he you know he's hot right now his, with his album that dropped and yeah. during interviews he's always talking about Tully. And when I saw it, I went ape shit because I was so I'm so sick of flipping back and forth re when you're writing you know you got to keep playing start stop play stop re, go back replay 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 but that's handy. Uh, man, I'm an app junkie, dude. <laughs> I'm an app, I, I swear, I'm, I'm, I'm terrible with it. I'll download an app like To Do List, man. I got every fucking productivity app, and I I use them. Trello, Evernote, Notion, dude. That like I dig deep on them. I always, I always need somebody to play with them with me. You know what I'm saying? I need like I try. I send them on to my fiance. She's like, "What the fuck am I supposed to put on there? I ain't got nothing to <laughs> fill out." Because I fill them out from everything from. I don't know, maybe it's me being a Pisces dude, but I uh, since I was a kid, anything I set my mind to, if it was a hobby, I had to fucking master it or be the best I could be at it, no doubt, before I would put it down or if I yeah. ever put it down. I'm talking stuff like, you may have seen me spinning glow sticks online, like yeah. I probably became the best in Metro Kentuckiana, and I would, yeah, I would... I'll take that title as far as best poi spinner, glow stick spinner. I got my videos on YouTube. Uh, that yo-yos, bro. I'll rip a yo-yo on somebody. Let somebody give me. Now, of course, nowadays these kids are doing lunatic shit with some yo-yos, dog. Uh, the yo-yo comes off the string and shit, and they got they doing tricks and then rehook it back up. Like I, I can, I, yeah, I ain't go that far. But back in the day, I was the shit with a yo-yo, cause I'm a, rocking the motherfucking yo-yo, I, which is maybe why I was in, instantly good at glow sticks or picked it up a lot easier than some folks will. Nunchucks, well. martial arts weapons, you know what I'm saying? Oh. That was my shit. Drawing is probably the one thing I could never. To this day, I ain't mastered it, and now, I, like I told you, what to get from the get, I just reset, dog. My my writing is like a fifth grader's, and my drawings because my hands messed up, man, and it's killing me. As an artist or a creative, losing your right hand or your dominant hand, yeah, it's bad. I, I wanted to go to the shooting range and shoot pistols. You, so I, I, my hand, my fucking thumbs numb. <laughs> yeah. You know now you was talking about uh <laughs> nunchucks and shit, you know, because you got that. That little twang in your accent and everything. You reminded me right off the bat of, uh, you remember that video, homeboy, uh, the, the ninja. Ninja. No, you didn't just do that, bro. You for real just went there. Dog, motherfucker, swear that's me. 
They will swear. If somebody sees that, they think that is mean. Are you talking about dude holding a big black? No, no, no. He had like the, the dip can and all these. And now don't go ninja in nobody that don't need no ninja. In, you know? <laughs> and he has a fucking dildo at the mid, in the middle end of it or some shit. Whoa, I don't know about that one. I had to research. Oh, okay. Everybody. I thought she was talking about the new age wigger. <laughs> you know, talking about the new age wigger. This motherfucker's talking shit and it rips up. Man, motherfuckers talk about it. It's me, bro. I, I swear I thought she was talking about that one. He's holding a big black. Something I found. I'm pretty sure it's a motherfucking dildo, but he's pretending it's a dildo nonetheless, holding it and fucking just being funny. You know what I'm saying and shit <laughs> like that. Like, and he's got a crooked hat. He's got a, he's talking funny, and everybody always see. Yeah, that's that's B Rad. That's Brad. <laughs> no, uh, I haven't seen that video, but I mean, <laughs> you, who, 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 who are you talking about? You said he got an accent twang to his voice. Uh, I got. Uh, I'm gonna have to find it and send it to you though. But it's just like it's an old YouTube video. It's just. Um, um, him doing a pretty much a, um, a self defense tutorial. He's got nunchucks, I see, and, and and you know, and it's funny that I even brought that, I put, took that cat out the bag with the nunchucks, bro. Because fucking, uh, yeah, I, I'm sure. Following me, you've seen the wigger picture at some point. Me and as I was 16 years old, the reason I called myself Infamous Rad, like the reason Infamous Society, I guess, wouldn't have been in existence had it not been for it, but. A photo of me when I was 16, and it's kind of my story with all my with a lot of my albums that I carried up until now, anyways. But my Wigger picture, if you Google Wigger, I was number one on Google Images for the last 20 years. I've been number one in the first five top images when you Google Wigger, <laughs> uh, and uh, that kind of made me go viral from the get, dog, and maybe not such a positive manner, but. To this day and back then, I always said any any publicity is is whether positive or negative. It's publicity, you know. Any advertisement, it, promotion, whether positive or negative, you can call it what you wish. It's still promotion. You're I'm getting seen. I'm getting. I said I needed to copyright the damn photo because these <laughs> motherfuckers were sharing it, getting five hundred thousand, one million likes off my image that was stolen when I, me as a kid at that, me as an adolescent. So yeah, I made the whole album about that. Uh, that was about five mixtapes, six mixtapes ago. That was my infamous 2014s when I really did a tape about it. Uh, and and it's always been a thing to this day. Every once in a while, it'll pop up on a meme, man. And I'm definitely gonna have to just send that stuff to you, dog. Like, have you seen it? No, um, you haven't seen my wigger picture, dog. I mean, if you Google wigger nunchucks, I'm pretty sure I still come. I think it's covered in me. Like, I don't know if you can uh, multitask on here or not. I got my phone. Wigger, wigger nunchucks definitely brings me yep, up. Or if there just you are. Bigger, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it's a negative trait, some will say, man. But it's kind of like my story now. Anymore, anymore, it's become my story. And fucking uh, people, are like, yeah, he's number one on Wig. He's number one on Google. You search Wigger, like bragging on it, basically. Yeah. I, I lost my place in the title, man. Like I fell way back. It looks like when you just search Wigger, I ain't, I ain't in the top no more. But I used to be. I used to be literally number one. Because is that some? Is that some wrestling figures up in the top corner? <laughs> <laughs> so what is that that is uh who i don't even know who that is that, what? <laughs> that's crazy man but that kind of gave me a um and and since then i said i'm not famous i'm infamous you know what i'm saying uh, it, that's how it's always been that's where the infamous yeah wigger nunchucks man it's uh not wrestlers it's homies you remember the homies oh the little yeah the little um little dudes i never yeah. had none but i had the poster the nunchucks was hanging and there's all kind man i'm a drug dealer at my school i could kill you if i wanted to <laughs> oh shit somebody put an updated photo right next to it you see that yeah, when you trade that. your nunchucks for capris <laughs> they clowning <laughs> yeah i seen that one too uh, and look even somebody god damn it if i hate black people and they got the freaking homies poster circle i mean people just read so deep they said that because i'm holding i'm only holding like 200 bucks i remember it was my birthday dog like i i was holding my birthday bunnies up and uh that's never that's funny just looking at it. a little young old me dog that was me when i was sophomore year i think sophomore year of high school maybe <laughs> maybe junior 
<laughs> but yeah, I, yeah, it blew me up, bro. I'm viral if you didn't know. It's just on that motherfucker. So I try to leech off that and get my music on there. I got a couple screenshots of the big players. Like there's a couple things on Facebook that's always sharing memes, the Thug Life and shit like that. Yeah, because it, yeah, it's popped up on there numerous, numerous times. Now, um, we talk about you know music and everything like that. I mean, wh- when when did the bug bite you? When did it, it hit you to where like I can do this, and you decided to pursue it. See, that's the thing. That's, that's why I talk about these people that are just popping up out of nowhere, man. It's almost like the industry knows what people's going to And it's true. I mean, you got what they call a, uh, is it a rat? Not a rat. It's a, uh, uh, a plant. Uh, industry plant like they know what people want in this like what the trend is this month this week this year whatever you want to do like right lately it's been all about the emo punk rage and whatnot but they just mimic an image that people are going to buy and and is exactly what people currently are trending on and you know one hit wonder whatever it may be to me I'll never, I won't say it's not a dream. I won't say it didn't used to be a dream. I'll say I don't pursue it in the manner I used to. Maybe I grew up, I'm 31 now, dog. Like, I've been making music a long time. To me, it's always been a a journal for one. Uh, Like, that's my diary. But it's more stress relief, dog. Like, it, it was always even. My first mixtape, I was just doing this the other day looking at some of my first songs because I've got over 250. I've never lost a song it, since the day I started recording, which as I, we looked, my first song was 2004, 2004, maybe 2000, early 2005. But that was when I met Anomaly, too, in those times, and he was making music, and we both went steady. We've been steady ever since, you know. The internet has changed the game so much, man. Back then, there wasn't a studio in every fucking house. There wasn't a, a producer behind every computer, or, or okay, let alone a computer, even. Uh, when I found out you could take a fucking piece of shit, I hope I'm allowed to cuss on here, bro. I didn't even Fuck ask. I should have asked that from the guy. Make sure it was cool. Motherfucker Make sure you ain't got to do a bunch of edits. Uh, <laughs> Dingling. It, it is straight. <laughs> yeah, it's straight. You're unfiltered. I make sure that's a good thing about podcasts. You got to watch that radio shit. Uh, <clears throat> that's the one thing about it, man. Is when I learned you could take a POS mic, stick it right into a regular computer, into the microphone jack, record, and back then the program was cool edit pro you know that's what that's what everybody used and take this free program download it and 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 lay it out like that i mean now again that's 2004 2005 i can even go further back and remember and it was probably eminem uh in his early 99 2000 right around that 99 that millennium change you know the y2k uh i think I be I was starting to become you know I was born in eighty eight so what was I like 11, 88, yeah I was like eleven or twelve years old then that's probably when I really started to write and that's been the thing I've always wrote man uh, since then dog I can remember to this day my first rhyme even in one song I say and drop my first rhyme it never got recorded but uh, my very first lyrics with uh, shout outs to Paris man yeah R I P my, my dude Paris Hamilton got me going. It was uh, my best friend growing up, black kid. You know, he, he just passed away about three years. We're going on four years, I think. Now, man, that's crazy. But he was just a character in the city, the whole city. They're, like, he made friends with anybody he met. And I'm not such an extroverted person like that. I, I, I'm more recluse, you know. But he was the opposite of, and just just so energetic and, and uh I don't know my life would be a lot different had I not met him. But another thing he did, of course, was inter- not introduce me. I, I was listening to rap or I heard rap. You know, I was kind of rap. Back then it was about Limp Biscuit. You know, that ain't is it rap. <laughs> These days we wouldn't call it rap. Uh, it's really rock. But uh, we he really, I think it was a little handheld audio recorder. We, he made this first song. And he, I, I remember his first lyrics to his song he always spit. And my, I remember the beginning of my lyrics, my guy, to this day, I'm going to do it for y'all too, though. I started out busting the rhymes. <laughs> That's how it started. <laughs> I started out busting the rhymes. Back then, I was a kid. I don't even know why I started up with the shit like that. I'll never forget my parents finding that song, dog. <laughs> 
white white boy white boy dog white boy family dog I'm saying they found that song and I think I went through my mom my dad my sister in the song I'd be like my sister got sent to a juvenile center or something and my sister never she was younger than me she had, it was a bunch of lies you know that's one big thing that's changed in my music especially for the past uh, 2014 2015 to now man is is when I started making music the beginning of me making music was during another catastrophic time in my life, man. It was uh, uh, really just me dabbling in the club scene so much. And as a, a, a teenager, I was getting into clubs because I, I, I knew graphic design. I studied computers my whole life. I studied web design my whole life. It is, again, my whole life, me until 11, 12, when I can take anything serious up. Uh, uh, and I would build, I would go to the clubs and I would build the club a website or a flyer or even a fucking logo. And that would opt me into that club and I'd never get charged. Or Anomaly was at the at the door <laughs> running security <laughs> and I made the website. So, I don't know, I got treated like a king when I was 16, man. And that can, that kind of freaking love, I guess. It was, uh, some people would kill for it, but just that kind of attention. I was the best glow stick to one of the best glow stick spinners in the club. Because, I, again, I think that glow, that, the glow sticking thing was a huge part. Everybody popping ecstasy. Molly wasn't really out then. Trance, the trance era, you know what I'm saying? It was all about, like, uh, yeah, just tr- electronica, which it still is, but long before dubstep. Yeah. Uh, I remember but hanging out in them clubs, man. It was just, and then I got introduced to where I would eventually meet Anomaly or that that same apartment, man, in Yorktown in the south end of Louisville, Kentucky. We uh, lived in that. I remember I stayed up for two weeks straight. I don't know how I did. I can't stay up for freaking <laughs> one night. I can't even. I don't even see the light at midnight most days. Uh, as we had two weeks, that was loony. We was just. It was a dope house. <laughs> really but in their existence shouts diamond shouts anomaly b money uh camo to capo he locked it he's on lockdown right now but all of us is that they showed me they had fruity loops they were making beats they was uh they had a better mic not a computer mic they had a real it was a, a dynamic mic it wasn't even a studio mic but they were dropping songs man and diamond was the 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 main of the collective there he was the one that kind of bred everybody else uh, the, at the top of the chain, and uh, he, he's so so talented, man. I just hate it when I see so much talent go to waste. Uh, and it's not—I can't say it like that because what am I doing with it? You know, I, I, what am I doing with it on the flip side? But someone who intentionally chooses not to pursue what they like or what they're good at, man. I've seen so many people so good at stuff, and I used to always say that's why I was even fucking around with the rap game, because of all the talent unheard of, un, unknown, the unknown talent, making graphics for free, making CD covers for free, trying to blow up anybody in, that would get heard in the city. And nowadays, we're such a saturated market of, of man, it's just so different. It's so robotic anymore. Like, yeah so different now man yeah like, I, I, you don't feel the soul behind the music anymore that's the thing and you gotta have that my some of my favorite artists right now are on soundcloud with a maybe a hundred thousand likes or hundred whatever and you know what i'm saying a few they're thousands they're not famous they're not famous but then again you gotta flip and say what is famous how many likes justifies famous yeah and you, you have to be living off that idea that whatever that may be your that art that idea that specifically is that fame is it fortune i mean everybody's got their own idea you know what makes you happy in this life and at the end of the day what makes me happy is being able to play back my life in audio format and and re i can go back to them club days anytime in my head i just got to turn them songs on and talk about the girl i was with then um Maybe that's why it's so hard to write about my chick nowadays and chicks nowadays. Like it, I can't write about girls unless uh, something happens. And that's the thing. It's all true stories for me, man. Like it's not a game. It used to be a wordplay game. How can I fit these words together in a puzzle to, to make sense or tell a story? But now it's, 
telling my story anymore and that, and and that's kind of my latest project i've gone from uh the awakening which is essentially me getting like me getting out of jail uh the awakening me coming to terms with my sobriety uh and now it's converged into the real me and it really does tell a story man i, I if you get some time i think it's 40 minutes if you listen to be for at to beginning to end I don't make my song three, four, five, six minutes long unless they got other people on them. They're usually pretty short and sweet. But The Awakening, if you listen to it from from first song on and maybe read through the notes I leave with it or the album cover or the booklet, I actually made a full, it's the first project, I made a full jewel case, eight page, you know what I'm saying? I did the whole deal. I put all the lyrics in there. It's a, it's a, a real CD, you could say. Oh, shit. Out of, uh, that's probably like the 20th, Mix, when I say mixtape, uh, I mean a chapter of my life that I clicked new folder on the computer and then I built them songs up for however long and then I'd start the next project and I'll continue doing that. So I've got, I think it was 26 folders full of 10, 15, 20, some 25 completed songs at that. I mean, uh, <laughs> but it's it's kind of cool. Some people, you know, even I used to, I think I had a journal back in the day, but when I saw and Eminem did it for a lot of them, that's why I brought him up because I think that's what first told me a white person can do this. Yeah. And that's what cracks me up about people like even MGK, I'm going to say it, I'm going to say it, MGK, any white rapper that disses Eminem today. I mean, if you was, if you're old enough to be rhyming before Eminem was in 99, okay, then, then fair enough. But anyone who disses him, man, it ain't even, you ain't even got to like Eminem, but you got to respect uh that if he wasn't there there's a good chance it would not be like it is today like he he made it accepted for the white community to be involved in a primarily african-american culture and i just i don't know people that diss and i'm like dude you wouldn't there wouldn't be no mgk if there were no eminem you know what i'm saying and maybe that's not enough to i ain't saying bow to him by any means but it just cracks me up when folks just uh, i mean haystack's one of them i, oh, I yeah, don't yeah. say it. haystack i don't like him dude i don't like his because of how he feels about it in, in his videos that's all i had to, i like his music i do like his music don't get me ready dude's got actually excellent music and production value but People who white rappers who just Eminem just crack me up, dog. Because you got to pay the respect there. That if Eminem hadn't done what he did, or you can go back and say if Dre hadn't done what he did, it, it might maybe it wouldn't be like it is today. Even I mean, it, it, everybody's a rapper anymore, man. I bet you can't think of a rapper name that ain't taken. Try to think of one, bro. I've been trying to do it for about a month now, and <laughs> I've come up with some lame ass names, but uh, uh, I haven't I thought of you. nothing that wasn't taken. L- like they're every, they got everything taken. Little, pe- little Pepto. Uh, <laughs> little Pepto. I'm, I'm, I'm a- Yo, was, uh, what was I saying earlier on the way to work? I was like, uh, Infus. I was saying inf- INFA, like Info in Must, but I was saying Infosane, Infosane or something. I was like, maybe that ain't taken. I need to Google that. Infosane. Like insane, but infosane. I'm about to, I'm about to, I'm in SoundCloud right now. I'm about to look in a uh, little Pepto. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. And that, you know, SoundCloud is, is the real appreciation there, dog. It is blowing people up anymore. Yep, they got one. Little Pepto. <laughs> There's two of them. Well, shit, three. Three, three, four. Hold on, let me see if this is the same person. Damn, see, that's, that's a good, that's a, that's a outrageous. That's a good example right there, cuz. Uh, <laughs> Just a, a thought of name on top. You said there's four already? Yeah, there's um one, there's at least three of them. Lil Pepto. <laughs> <laughs> Lil Pepto, see, of all things, man, like, you specific, what now, when you said that, what made you say that? You thought of one of the most outrageous names, did you not? Yeah, it's just like you said, think of a name, and that was like the first thing that popped into my head was Lil Pe- Pepto. Pe- yeah, Pepto Bismarck. He kind of got a little twin, a little ring to it. I bet he got some, he got, he got some likes and views. <laughs> he got uh, 223, uh, 238 followers. Let's see what. Hey, not bad. He's stepping, it, he, he's stepping it up. My SoundCloud just lately started, to, and, and I ain't even gonna lie, it ain't because I did something amazing. It's because I took my wallet my credit card out, and I paid for promotion, you know, and uh, I actually got some traffic lately, and a lot of them are starting to become consistent traffic. 
I just feel, man, I, I critique my own work so much that I've got like 11 started songs right now, I think it is. I think there's 11, like 10 to 11 songs that are just started. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And whether or not they're going, I'm working on them every day. I open them and then I, it's recording myself mainly. I, I, <laughs> I'm dying to find someone to do it with me no more, man. Like, it's starting to kill me. Everybody's done retired. They're growing up. They, 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 but here's me, dog. I don't think I'm ever going to grow up, man. I don't know. I don't, that does not compute. I will always see my parents as the elders and me as the, I don't know, man. I'm a grown man. Don't get me wrong, but. There's some things I just I just can't yeah. do, bro. Like <laughs> I understand because I mean I look at my parents and you know I know I'm their child, but I still me in comparison to them I still feel like a kid. Exactly. When I think of old, I don't think of me, but I'm the age of my parents when they had me. <laughs> well, shit, but I ain't living like that right now. I swear I was for the last ten years of my life actually steady on my own working doing it working at a music store like i said i turned music to a career i did and i stepped away from it just two years ago not by choice <laughs> a swat don't raid your house by choice <laughs> but uh i uh i was doing it for 10 years i had my daughter and she kind of was the t- turning point in my life but at this point i ain't gonna say i lost motivation but she's getting older and i'm getting tired of yeah, I, I I get that. Like every day, I've been in, in two years, a year and a half. It is, so, you know, this is the awakening was me getting out of jail, bro. Is what it really was, because uh, I had never been to jail before. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like that was that was that was a first for me. Now I could say it in my songs, and I wouldn't be lying talking about <laughs> going to jail and shit. Well, I mean, I, uh, if, if it's not too invasive, I mean, what happened? <laughs> yeah, right. Freaking. Uh, I'm done. This is what it boils down to. Rad's retarded. Uh, my dealer and friend live two doors down, bro. And uh, we were fucking with the wrong shit, put it that way. You, you smoke some bud, fair enough. To have at it. Smoke some, some weed. Kick back. Eat some Cheetos. But don't do the harder shit, man. God, if I am not living proof, I should be dead ten times over. I don't know why I'm even still on this earth sometimes because I really don't. I'm, I'm, I'm blown away that I'm still alive sometimes. The, the damages I've done to my body with substances, like, I mean, you can't keep at that rate for all those, I mean, 30 years, you know, it's steady, never, never got sober. But that's why the awakening was me waking up. But fucking around with that boy, man, and then them harsher stuff. Like I said, I was sick 16, I think I was 15, 14. It was when I had my permit. So when I drove, I drove at 15 with an 18 year old plus or parents. Uh, but ecstasy then after that, we I got on meth real bad at probably 18 just because that's or 17, whatever it was in my teenage years. I had done been a, a clubber, a raver. And then I got hooked on fucking not and I say hooked, but I never bought it. It's just that house I told you we lived yeah. in. It was a drug house, and we fucking stayed up for a week smoking mess, making music. It's just what we fucking did all summer, all summer long. I still remember my first day of senior year. I walked in. Everybody by that point was gone. What no, but no, none of my friends were left. I mean, it was just everybody's brothers. I remember brothers and sisters running around, and I'm sitting here like, what the fuck am I doing here? So I had to join the crowd. Luckily, I, yeah, I dropped out, but I did go back and I actually got my diploma. That's another story. And hell, I got my college degree afterwards. Diploma don't even matter. But uh, that's a little side note. Freaking. Um, the whole deal was that, and after meth, it was crack. And then after crack, it, I had, I done did everything in the book by the time I was 20, damn near dog. But I promised myself I would never touch heroin. I would never shoot nothing. I will never shoot heroin. I'll never, I, I swore to my whole life. I loved pot. I loved my Xanax shit, everything pills, but I always swore I would never go to that extreme. And sure enough, I broke my own rule about four years ago, man. Uh, and it takes a hold of you. Unlike anything, the opiate crisis is a crisis. I ain't going to get preaching on that dog. I blame the doctors and the freaking government to begin with for prescribing everybody the pills, then taking them all away. Why don't they just give motherfuckers they pain pills back? Maybe they won't be out in the streets buying dope. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't get a pain pill for if you're really got a broken back or a broken arm anymore. They want they they'd be skeptical to even give you a fucking pain pill. Like what the hell? 
Yeah. Because you wonder why we got dope addicts all up in it. Anyway, and yeah, long story short, my neighbor had SWAT run in on him, but my dumbass had on, on some Xanax high. I, I heard the flash grenade go off, and this is new to me, dog. I ain't know about fireworks coming out the guns and the, <laughs> and the police running up in the crib and tackling her. Like, this wasn't happening at my house. It was two doors down, three doors down even, in the du- in duplexes, con- condo set up. So I walked out. I ran out. I ran to the door. and ran out there, and I just saw him. Jeffersonville, please, do 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 do. Search warrant. And I'm like, oh, my first, d- my dumbass, pick it, uh, my phone's in my hand. I start texting my plug. I start texting. Him. Oh no, <laughs> this motherfucker's already on the ground. Thirty motherfucking SWAT guards on top of him. What are you texting <laughs> him for? But uh, I texted him, and uh, to my left, I saw what I thought. Anyways, at the time was a, my neighbor to the left of me, kind of in the distance, because I saw a light reflecting on his shirt or something and i saw his chain i thought it was this chain or his uh, light and it started getting closer to me and the closer it got i started realizing that's a fucking badge and uh and and this cop it's ironic we're talking about it because he just whipped me last night i thought i was i should have woke up in jail bro i should have for real and that would have sucked all i could think was man if i stunt on this interview again <laughs> I can't stunt on this interview i gotta make this interview because i talked to that man denver and and uh, again, I made it 30 years. I made, I made it 30 years of my life with no freaking mishaps, dog. I never got caught up. I mean, I had a couple close calls. I was quite lucky, actually. But I never went to jail, dog. I, I, I just I just made, I sn- snaked my way on past the police my whole life and got lucky. But it, it was an awakening call, man. That's why I call it the awakening, because going in jail and getting, and when you're coming down off that shit, man, it's just like reality hits you, dog. It's just re- it smack back to reality and it hurts so bad the sickness hurts so bad that's one thing i'll just never get about a drug you're going to do that's going to make you sick like that the next day but or the next hour uh i wasn't in jail but i think a week which was plenty enough for yeah. me let my mom she went to bat for me she's the only one that cared enough to get my ass out of jail uh when I got out, I was in motivation mode, dog. I was in, I was in, I was ready to change everything. I had lost everything except my car, except my 2000, at that time, 2017 Scion, and yeah, I got a 2019 now. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I lost my duplex. I lost everything in the house because the day I got out of jail was the day I was evicted and I couldn't, I, did, I couldn't work that week, so I didn't make rent. And I couldn't pay rent, so I had to get my shit out that day. Luckily, my mom and my fiance had already got a little bit out, but that day I swore it would change. And lo and behold, six months later, I relapsed. I had it was, I had already relapsed, but that same week, man, I was riding with dude who we was going to grab, and and the lights popped up behind me. At that time, I was going to get more, but heroin's a different drug, bro. Heroin's something you do for me, anyways. I never, I've never put, I still to this day, I've never put a needle in my veins. I've at least got to hold on to that. I'll at least be thankful a needle's never penetrated my skin for that. You know what I'm saying? Trying to get high, so taking blood, and I don't even like needles. Like yeah, I like tattoos though. I'll get tat, I'll get tatted, but uh, I just uh, I snorted it. When I found out you could snort heroin, I'm like, oh really? Well, I'm snorting methadone, suboxone, tabs. Then I'm snorting all that. What, what the fuck? Why the fuck not? You know, I, I I justified it in my head, dog. But like I said, it's so much different. The sickness you get from dude, it's a bitch. It really is a bitch, yeah. fucking. Uh, but I relapsed and saw them lights and I had what I was saying. I, I conserved it. I never wanted to run out because you'd be sick. It's your medicine. It's not just your high. It actually it, you know, it turns away from your high. It becomes your medicine. You have to have it to function. And I had a little bit left in my sock and I was on. Uh, you ever seen live PD? Yeah, bro. I was on that motherfucker dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dog. How embarrassing. Cause oh my God. And it was because I was retarded again. The first time I went to jail, I walked my ass out, sticking my nose where it don't belong, man. When you see 37 cops running into a house, you don't go look, dog. Get the fuck in your house. My neighbor, my immediate neighbor, not the dude I'm talking about, but he even opened his door and said, it's police, get inside. He smoked pot, you know what I'm saying? My ass got dope in my pocket, just standing out there, with a hand over the head, you know what I'm saying? Hand over the head, like, what's going on out here, guys? What the fuck? That badge got closer. I let him in my house. My dumbass let him in the house. My dumbass signed the search warrant. I didn't have to do that, man. They were—they had me fooled, dog. I, I, they had me, I, I guess, scared, nervous, telling me I was going to lose my daughter. 
you know, that's how cops are, bro. It's, it's just ridiculous. The second time, the second I see the arresting officer from the first time, my dumbass introduces myself as the motherfucker you just arrested six months. Like, what the <laughs> fuck? He, he arrested me during the process of Operation Icebreaker, which was a huge bust, dog. Like, my plug they took out, well, he, he, he was, uh, you wouldn't think it by seeing it. But that motherfucker was high level, well, high roller when you really look at the amount uh, and the money he had and just the, the amount, dog. And uh, freaking, I, I was trying to shake dude's hand and thank him for being sober. And I should have known Den, this Denver, I, mean, I hope I'm allowed to say police name. Denver's ass, dog. He will freaking harass you and harass you and he's searching your ass. I mean, dog, if you got fucking a crumb of anything, a mini, a little baby pill in your toe, on, on your toe, he's going to find it. The dogs and all that shit. Anyways, yeah, I went to jail that day. Second time relapsed. The only difference this time was I had the bond money at home waiting, bro. The mar, I was ready to go to jail. I was like, motherfuckers, lock me up. Go ahead, I'm going because I'm all bond out. As soon as I hit that fucking door, dog, what? <laughs> and it sucked because you get in jail and they like you have no bond. <laughs> how am I gonna pay? Ten, how am I gonna pay? How he said it? Tick Cat Williams said it. How am I gonna pay ten percent of nothing, Jesus? <laughs> I'm gonna pay ten percent of nothing. I can't do math, Lord. <laughs> Fucking no bond, dog. But I, yeah, I, they, I, I got bond eventually, and I bonded out before my court date too, hoping I could go into court second time, dog. By now, Indiana don't play, bro. Indiana, you, it used to be a seed, a marijuana seed on your floor. You going to jail? Uh, but fucking. Well, I don't know, dog. It just happens I live in this state, and uh, yeah, I mean, it was a wake up call nonetheless. Now, um, be, being, uh, do you notice the difference in your production? You know, being sober versus you know when you were using. I do, and uh, you know, I've yet to step on stage, so that's the real rush. I want to, I want, and I could get on stage. It's just I, I don't want to keep. Bro, I got like 30 YouTube videos of me on stage. Trust me, I was high in every single... Usually I get drunk. I am not a drinker, dog. I am totally... A, I'll admit being an addict all day. But alcohol, no, it never fazed me. Or anybody in my family, for that matter. Uh, I'm not a drinker, really. And I never even liked it. I still don't like it. I haven't drank in two, three years. And um, I don't even think about it. it. It's just something I don't do. I got my demons, trust me. That don't mean anything good, necessarily. It is a good thing, but I usually get tipsy at the show. So every show, every YouTube, you YouTube search Infamous Society Live, you'll see all kinds of our performances. And I'm just tired of that same old bar show. Every video there I look at, and I can find either a trip or a mess up. I, I, nobody else can see it, but I can see it. And it's just being sloppy. And that's the thing, when you... When you in your head wake up like that, and as I say, you I, I hit reality hard, and it was more of sympathy, shame, just those those raw emotions, uh, and and without drugs to to relieve them or help you relieve them or not, you're not relieving shit, you're numbing them until you deal with them later. Is all you're doing, but. I forgot what it was like to let my emotions flow through paper again, or or, or express it through words. Um, and that was the big, the big difference. And, and it's an ongoing battle, man. I, I'm kind of a little bit different advocate of it. Again, I don't drink at all. I will smoke. I support marijuana legalization all day. It ain't legal in my state. I wish it was. But uh, yeah, last night, again, I should have went to jail. They took my vape pen, dog, my little uh, e my, it wasn't e cig. It was a fucking pot, you know, the cartridges now. They took that. They didn't, they didn't take me to jail. So there is a little bit different day and age going on. But, uh, I don't know, man. I just see it like if you spend your life avoiding something, like I don't have to avoid alcohol. I just don't care. I don't think about it at all. But other shit, I think uh, my mind churns, bro. When people say it's because I'm so high strung, I need to, I'm trying to self-medicate, you know, whatnot. Uh, I don't know what it was. And it scares the shit out of me because I look at my daughter, bro. She's eight years old. And I'm seeing so many of the same characteristics I saw or I remember in myself as a child, like the the nonstop need for some stimulation in your brain. Like you have to be my daughter's just like me, bro. We can't. I, I tell my daughter to sit still. Don't move. Sit there. Don't move. Stop. Just stop. She, dude, she'll go fucking nuts. And she's eight. 
I ain't trying to start on. I, I was on Ritalin when I was a kid, I think. Mama took them, though. I didn't take them. Maybe that's what fucked me up. Who knows? But <laughs> I ain't trying to dope her out with a bunch of medicines and all that. But she really is a spitting image of me, dog, uh, personality-wise. Uh, High-strung, energetic, just go, go, go. Uh, and, and it scares me because the only thing I knew or the only thing I learned growing up to do was was – relieve it with drugs, relieve it with substances. I mean, that's just kind of what we did. <laughs> that was my generation and the generation before me and after me a little bit. Luckily, these new generations are a little more straightened out, man. I pray to God they maintain because, I mean, so the newer generation drugs are, I don't want to say they're on a, on a decrease or anything. They might be on an increase, but the newer generations, they don't, they don't smoke. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not cool for them to smoke. Back in the day, I ain't going to say it was cool, but it was kind of the thing to do. Everybody smoked yeah. cigarettes anyway. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was smoking pot. I remember in uh, freshman year, before freshman year, I was smoking pot in seventh grade. What am I talking about? I smoked pot my whole life. And, yeah. and you know, was it a gateway drug? Yeah, I kind of was, but. I'm also glad that I didn't wait till I was 40 to try crack. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Or, th- or even 30 now. You know yeah. saying? I know. Don't do that because I learned that shit when I was 19 years old, 18 years old. Fucking, I, I should have died multiple times over. But I learned my lessons real quick. You know what I'm saying? Nonetheless. <laughs> so, yeah. well, yeah, we live and we learn in this life thing. The only difference is I try to tell it. And, uh, and I've been pushing this stuff a lot more lately. Uh, you I have... People, some people separate their personal life and their music life, and I, my fiance even tells me I, I, I can't separate the two sometimes. I live in the studio right now. I'm talking to you through the studio. Yeah, uh, I'm always editing music. Trying, uh, I don't really produce much beats and stuff like that, but I'm always trying to express myself in one way or another. Though, like now, like uh, I told you, everything I set my mind to. Would you? If I didn't master it, I can't really call everything me a master. Yeah. These days. Now we, I got good at. It. I wasn't. I wasn't a newbie in it. And music specifically, we've been doing this. Me and a couple of my peoples in the Louisville, like Chris is one of them. There's a bunch of us that we've been doing this stuff for years. And these know-it-alls, man, they come out and they and and they hot too. And they hot. They sell. I mean, I, sometimes I think of the dumbest shit I can think of. And if I and if I write that down and I sing it like a bit a bit a bit a bit a bit. It sells better than the most heartfelt, emotional, deep <laughs> song ever, dog. Like, throw some auto tune on some mumbling, a hot beat, and bam, hit. That's a formula. Mwah! The formula <laughs> of 2019. <laughs> and I get tired. Like I said, most I, if I'm listening to music, I'm listening to SoundCloud. Probably I, I am listening to SoundCloud anymore. Uh, and, and artists on there, like lately, it's been this kind of. Some people call it a sad, the sad boy wave. Uh, I don't know if you ever listened to Lil Peep. I, I've, you heard, I've heard of Lil Peep. I've heard of these people, but I haven't heard none of their music. I haven't heard of uh, Lil Peep. Is you know he's dead now. Uh, yeah. You know, two years ago, and the kid never made it. I think he was only nineteen. Maybe he was twenty-one. Dude, he was early twenties at max. Uh, the dude made some amazing, amazing music, dude. I will honestly probably see him as like the Roger Walter to me, the, the Roger Waters, uh, like Pink Floyd uh, of my time. Because I, I, I even when I was a kid smoking my first joint, it was all about the wall and Pink Floyd. To, uh, like that was just what we freaking did. Whoever you want to say the person of your era, like Lil Peep was the voice of a generation. He was no doubt the younger ones, but anybody i promise anybody that likes any genre can listen to at least one of his songs they will find that they dig they fuck with uh it's not rap i always thought Lil peep was Lil punk kind of i thought he was a mumble rapper uh new age rapper but he's not man he's really an, an alternate rock motherfucker but the label people put on it is emo rap yeah. which is more alternative rockish vibes uh, dude had a good voice, and yeah, I promise there's no way yeah, you, I can send you some links. But if you just search Lil Peep, even if you click next, 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 till you hear a jingle or a tune you you dig or you, you, it's okay listening, I promise you'll find some shit of his. Uh, the difference is I can't sing, dog. I never could sing. I, I'm just now, after messing with music for 15, 16, 17 years, starting to sing a little bit more in the songs. Uh, 
and and learning how much I can't do it. You know what I'm saying? But like I said, people don't have to know how to sing no more. They got auto tune. It corrects yeah. it for them, and and they roll along with it. But I'm so judgmental in my music, man. I judge myself so harshly, and maybe it's because I, I, I compare, my, put myself on a pedestal, comparing myself to uh, su- more successful people. Like uh, uh, Lil Peep died, and now he's damn near getting more famous just because uh, of the legacy he left behind. And that's how I'm looking at it now. Okay, I may not be dead. But how much material can I get out, at least on my thumb drive? Because I know if I die, my fiance is going to push that shit. She better. You better, girl. You better. <laughs> my shit so to you fucking pass out. <laughs> she already does. No, she's real supportive, dog. Uh, even my daughter. My daughter knows all the words to the first song on The Awakening. He will know. He will call her name. My daughter knows the whole first, second, third verse. She'll, she'll spit it, which better that song than some of the other ones, I will say. Yeah. Uh, now let, let let me get in here real quick because I mean, boy, you, I, I haven't heard you take a breath since you started. <laughs> um, I don't think I have, dog. Now I knew I was gonna do it. I told you just be like, shut the fuck up, Brad. Um, not only do you uh do the music and everything, I mean, you have some uh technical skills with the uh video camera and whatnot. But dog, I looked at your um your your freaking um your web page package. Or whatever for your logo uh-huh. and your, your production company or whatnot. Now, that shit looks clean as shit, man. I mean, how many hours you putting into like your web design and all kind of stuff like that? That's all day, every day, man. I'm at even while I'm working, I'm watching tutorials, uh, learning more. That's an ever changing industry, man. You can't never keep up on that enough. Uh, I've got it mapped. I mean, I just built the website for my work. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's always side jobs and stuff like that. But right now, I think I've got one, two, three, two, six, six domain names. Because you went to uh, www.localwebsource.com. Yeah, that's that's probably what you was looking at, my portfolio, essentially. Uh, I've got, I'm trying to rebrand myself and, and make these websites. I've got six of them and I cannot seem to finish them right now. I don't know what the block is, but, uh, I went to school for it and I've got a degree in visual communications and I, I've always digged art, but when I took computers and mixed it with art and made a career out of it or tried to make a career out of it, don't get me wrong. It's a side hustle, I guess. Really, I'm not in the field doing it professionally, but I've done it long enough. I will call myself a professional all day long because I know that ins, outs, wrongs, what you should do, what you shouldn't do when it comes to having an online presence. Uh, The marketing thing, I'm still learning more about. I'm definitely still studying up on all that stuff. But uh, What's some good keys for coding? Because, like, I've I've always looked at this stuff or whatever, and it's just like, looking at latin or something <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh programming was always a bitch for me man I, I, I getting to some of the uh earlier ages of programming it was always a bitch now just like music ironic but just like music man but web design has become so maybe it's just the internet and i can and more people have a voice more people put their stuff out and you see more people you know, I mean, is the world really worse when you hear the news and hear how many people died today and you think, man, it's so bad today. It wasn't like that. Was it like that back in the day? You wouldn't know because it wasn't all on the news. Exactly. And maybe they, maybe it was just that bad. You just didn't hear about it. You know what I'm saying? When you hear some of the shit, I mean, so we, we got to talk about that <laughs> on the flip side. Oh, what, what was it different? Uh, yeah, uh, maybe, but uh yeah, I side shot where I was even going with that. I ain't even gonna lie. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. yeah, but like. I'm trying to say less and less, but dog, I, maybe it's that I've uh, wanted the chance to roll all this stuff out for a long time. I just never really placed it. Like I said, I got all these projects started. Infamous.live. That's the main one I was working on lately to brand myself music wise, but then it turns into me coding my own custom music player like Spotify, oh, okay. then it turns into the, not just the graphics for it and all that, but the programming knowledge in some cases with the changes of the web. Of the web. Uh, my resume is pretty stacked, but these kids these days is programming some hefty shit. I mean, I, you can say nerd. I am a nerd. I'll rep nerd all day. Nerd, G, raver all at the same time, dog. Like, 
<laughs> but these some of these kids are smart dog like i look at some of the codes and html css html is the ever that's the probably the most where anybody would want to start if they're going to learn code html html5 is where we are today yeah. css4 just came out html is all the content you see on a website all the shit you read the way you read it the way it looks the colors it is where it's at on the page all that is defined by css yeah. So it, it, CSS is your styling, your visuals, HTML is your technicals, your content, your, your raw data. It truly is uh, like the matrix. And you movie. get into, okay, it, it looks like it looks and it says what it says, but how can I make it freaking move when they click it? Or how can I interact with the user when they click, when they move their mouse, when they hover? And all that goes into JavaScript. And JavaScript is so big these days, like it's blown up more than I ever expected because I studied JavaScript back in the day and now it's become mainstream and, and uh, streamlined, really. Um, now, I got a, it's I got also a question. Good thing. I, got a uh, question. I got a question for you. Yep. Now, I mean, with all this uh, code knowledge and everything, I mean, you, you seem pretty uh, savvy with it and whatnot. How much of your talent have you used to fuck over somebody? <laughs> yeah. Cause I, cause I, I, thought, I, cause like, I, yeah, cause I, I knew a kid, guy. Cause I was studying hacking and stuff. Like how I, I trick people, man. Uh, not yeah, I sure have dog. Not as much as one would. I yeah. have the, the curse of a good heart. Unfortunately, uh, there's very few of those breeded alive today. There's not many folks with a good, I'm just finding out you be a dick in life. You win dog. You're number one. If you're mean to motherfuckers all day, every day, for some reason, they want your approval the next day. But if you're nice, then motherfuckers notice when you're mean and they call you a dick. <laughs> it's like you know, Donald Trump, president, hey, prime example, well, number one in America, bro. Like, you, you be a dick to everybody, you'll ho- and, and you'll be okay. Yeah. Because uh, I knew a guy back in the day, like, um, I guess he knew it on some type of level, but he wouldn't do nothing malicious to, like, you know, create chaos and then you just do something to like annoy the fuck out of somebody. Cause I mean, chat rooms used to be big back in the day. Or whatever. Right. I mean, it probably still is, but that's not a world that I know nothing of. But, um, he would be, we'd be on chat rooms and there was somebody be fucking with him and like trolling them or whatever. He would, uh, show me this little, um, code that he did or a little virus that he would send to him. To where like it'll spring up a, like a ass load of pop up boxes and every time <laughs> that's JavaScript. Yep. Yeah. I remember them, dog. I remember those, the, the uh, uh, infinite pop-up box. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He was like, and the only way, so you, annoying. Yeah, the only way you can like get rid of it is like turn off your computer or some crazy shit or whatever. That was the only way. What I did is I would hit people with the uh, blue screen of death. They oh. called it. I could sit from my computer and turn make your computer fuck by the by sending a message really through the instant messengers flip your, your computer would flip and then yeah blue screen and you'd have no choice but turn it off at that point yeah damn <laughs> evil, uh, evil from a message they were called yahoo booters that was in aim aol instant messenger days uh yeah. yahoo messenger msn messenger that stuff's gone now man these kids got facebook that's all they know yes yeah, facebook snapchat that ain't dude. Back in the day, we weren't visual. We had to type those. Man, we had to type that stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, you think I would be a better speller because of that? But <laughs> <laughs> so you would think so. I could type better than with two fingers and whatnot. But yeah. uh, but like um, I, yeah, I guess so. Call me tech savvy, man. I just uh, I've always devoted my time to something. Unfortunately, I've added some not so healthy things along with them. Yeah, I don't want to say I was high doing this stuff. I I just think, what if I hadn't got high all them years, bro? How smart would I be now? How much money would I be making today had I not done drugs all these years? Because I've retained a lot of information, dog. And a lot of people will say that you're smart or 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 you're good at that. You're on it. To me, I fucking suck at all this stuff because I know the the level it can go. You know what I'm saying? The yeah. level you can acquire as far as skill, mm-hmm. and it from music to graphics and websites to freaking all of it. Like I just I see how good you can get at it. And then I compare myself and maybe that, and that's the wrong attitude because it really prevents my creative tendencies by, by not labeling them, but judging them or, or gauging them, you know? Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, some people don't do that. They learn that they can make a song and they write the first rhymes that come to their head and then they record it and they love it and it, and that's all fine. Me, I have to write a rhyme that I haven't already wrote in 250 songs prior. Yeah. 
and it's current and it's true. I mean, I don't think about it like that. I'm just writing, you know what I'm saying? But it's like a, to not repeat and not like, I don't know, rhyme and snitch with bitch and ditch. Yeah. <laughs> Only motherfuckers like that, they first rhyme, but that's not going to be in any of my songs these days. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I understand what you're saying because, I mean, you're always going to be your own worst critic and everything. I mean, to even think of this podcast, uh, year one and two, it was just like, yeah, whatever. I'm I'm just kind of doing it, and I was like, man, you know, I'm not getting as many listens as this person, as this person, as this person, but whatever. But I found that I just fucking enjoy it, and as long as I'm still enjoying it, I'll still do it. You know, and, and that's the and that's the idea right there. Yep, that's the thing. As long as it's still uh, fun to you, I, I have that problem, man. Staying motivated when you live in a studio and. I started saying it earlier. I just want someone to record me, and I got a few folks in the city, but I'm trying to network, man. I, I'm trying to, any voices I can get and I can obtain to use on my project, I'm trying to collab with any. I don't care if they just started rapping last week. I just want some part, some some new partners, some new, I want, you know, I'm trying to dabble in everything. You, you can probably say that. You Anywhere there's some commotion, right, it's going to be there in some fashion, whether or not following, leading, whatever it is, I'm doing it. But I've been shouting out to any and everybody that's uh, that I see, you know, uh, rapping, right, uh, not even rapping, singing, yeah. musicians, producers, I'm just trying to trying to fuck with it all. You know, like I said, when I die, there's going to be so much content yeah. of me from designs, graphic designs, from website creations, maybe inventions when it goes into like the music players and, you know, custom stuff. My problem's thinking of the idea, dog. Anything I can think of, I can implement it. I can make it happen. I can make it a reality. Audio, video, graphic, anything I can imagine in my head, I can bring to life, which is a very, not everybody can't do that. You know, Yeah. some people would love to be able to do that. Uh, but my problem is thinking of, or coming up with, you know, come up with the next big thing. Anybody can say it, but can anybody do it? Like Facebook was an accident, you know, uh, yeah. all that I mean, wasn't really Mark Zuckerberg really toned in and came up with something, but coming up with the idea of, of what to make is the problem. And that's why I've got infamous dot live. I've got infamous rad dot design. I got full stack visual, which is going to be what is the new name of my web design company, web design branding full uh full stack visual dot solutions a snag i got six domain names i'm throwing all of <laughs> trying to get one of them all the way now up, th this, is, this is what you I, know this is what i'm on. right now you can get any dot design yeah. name for free <laughs> this, this is what i'm uh I, i'm asking you whatever since you you know you you tech savvy i mean you can do a little hacky cody code thing or whatever can you bust up somebody Instagram for me? Cause, um, no, and see that, and that gets more into, <laughs> into hacking, uh, and it's changed a lot these days. There's some tricks and whatnot. That's, I, that's really where I wanted to go when I started doing it. Not fucking up Instagrams, but networking, hacking. No, nah, um, like, I, I, I have, uh, you know, three. Now, if I had, if I had access to the back end of that code, absolutely, I could make it look like whatever the fuck you want it to look well, like. Nah, Tell me to make it look like, but what, getting that access, yeah. that's the, that's the catch right Yeah, what there. I'm yeah. saying, because like 3R Show is my thing, and they got a punk motherfucker on Instagram that has 3R Show, and he hadn't posted since 2017, and I can't talk to the motherfucker. He don't really what? respond to my shit. And damn, I hit up Instagram. I was like, hey, Instagram, can I get this shit? And they ain't reached back to me. So I was like, man, Rad, hit that motherfucker up. Let me get this shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could do it. Like I said, yeah. And then uh, if you wanted to uh, put his head, a picture of him, his head on a picture of motherfucking a porn star, get him getting fucked. You know what I'm saying? We could do it. I, that's that's where I've been malicious. <laughs> like I, I have so dude. I've even photoshopped. I've, I've I've made a diss track to a dude. And I ain't done no diss tracks in a long time. Don't get me wrong, unless it's to a chick, maybe mad. That's that's old news too. Anyway, I made a diss track to him, and he replied to me, answering me. Uh, I, I don't remember what I was saying. Why you gotta be so gay? It's a must. He like answered me in the song. It's a must. I gotta be gay. <laughs> Type. Fuck? I fucked him up. I uh, visually graphics Photoshop up people, doctored them up. You know, like man, and, and that was that was that was that was another thing too, because like. I, I dabbled in the Photoshop, and you know, I, I'm still, mm -hmm. 
I haven't done it in a long time because, like, I don't have a decent enough computer to handle freaking what Photoshop CC yeah, or whatever. Good. Yeah, but I can remember doing graphics back in the day and just, you know, doing what you were saying. Just like I would take people from work or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I would just, you know, doctor up some shit because I did. Uh, I took out my first sergeant and uh, one of the master sergeants that we had um, in our unit, and I put both of their heads on the Step Brothers poster from the the Step Brothers movie. Right. So I, I did that and everybody's like, Oh man, I didn't know you could do shit like that. And then I start getting all these crazy ass requests. I get a, a freaking text message in my phone of a guy holding a fish. And I'd be like, What the fuck is this? Hey man, I want you to take the fish out and put a big ass dick. And I was like, Come on, dog. <laughs> <laughs> so what you what you're asking me to do is corrupt my search history, have me looking at right. looking up dicks and shit to to amuse you, huh? <laughs> Lord, that's the thing. Yeah, Photoshop is actually really easy. It ain't too. I can't open Photoshop on the computer. I'm talking to you on no lie. Uh, but I can, it can handle some of the music stuff. You know, once you pile too many tracks on and, and all that, and I've my whole life I've had to get good at these little ta- these little areas uh, of skill. I had to get good at them without the best of the technology and latest of the and latest and greatest in in each one. You know. Uh, I slowly built my studio up from, like I said, the little computer, you know, the straight edge computer mics that yeah. float them things this was my first mic. And yeah, I've upgraded light years from there since, but yeah, I just now got an i7 processor and I was on a laptop for web design because my work bought it for me to ensure that I didn't have the problem of, Oh, my computer ain't good enough while I was making their website <laughs> with, with the bigger jobs I had lately. Uh, but freaking, I, uh, that, I guess an I-9 came out like a month before that. I didn't even know they had I-9, but of course I can't never have the latest and greatest. I'm not allowed to be that good at tech and have the newest shit. So I'm, yeah, tickled to have that, this, the laptop I do now, uh, to do video editing, bro, because that's, like, you talk about the videos, you know, the videos was just fun for me fun stuff, uh, transitions, and, and how can I make it look, but I actually, where that arose from was studying visual effects, and mm-hmm. I've never had a computer good enough to a lot. Yeah. I'm, I mean, my bucket list, bro, I ain't got a music video. I got almost 300 songs and never made a music video. It's like, that's my bucket list. If there is something I ain't done, it's that, and I can make my own. Nowadays, we're finally in a day and age where the cameras in our hands, mm-hmm. our phones, are good enough to record uh, a music video as yeah. far as the quality. My yeah. iPhone is, is yeah. over 10, it's 1080, it's, it's high def, it's 4K, whatever the hell it is, it'll look just fine if mm-hmm. I had recorded the right shots. You no, know what or it has the right lighting. Because I, I just got, I just got, I just got the freaking, editing. Um, computer is another is another story yeah <laughs> i just got the pro max or whatever man and this bitch just looks amazing the MacBook? no the um the phone the the 11, oh. the 11 pro max that yep. bitch is amazing <laughs> is it dude uh i got the 10 xr i got the the xr or the 10 r whatever uh i saw the and I, they got don't they have three uh three yeah. cameras on yeah, the back three cameras on that motherfucker i took a picture That's crazy yeah i took a picture yeah. of my wife and i was just like that looked crazy. And what was you? What was you transitioning from? I had the eight plus. Eight plus. So it was like a big difference looking at the screen, even type shit. Yeah, because I, I, you know, I, I stick with Apple. You, you know, everybody. Oh, iPhone. Nah, see, I, but, I'm and I know I'm educated on both PC. I'm quicker on a PC as far as like shortcuts and and, yeah. and custom. It's like Android and iPhone customizing my PC. But a Mac, if you're doing visual, if you're doing audio, if you're doing graphical stuff. You most likely probably, a Mac would save you a lot of overall trouble, headache, and just time. <laughs> it's yeah. just more stable. And first, so yeah, and, and with specific what you're doing, audio editing, all that, and, and marketing, pushing, not pushing that. Yeah, you're on. You're, you're right on point. Yeah. But I do know them snobs, the snobby yeah. people you're talking about. I do because I mean, it's it's the most reliable phone I've ever had, and I've had Android. I have Nokia. I had all the different brands of phones that they ever put out. And Bro, I ain't nothing I, ever done like my iPhone. If I lose my iPhone right now, I lose life. Yeah. Like, and, and my what, iPhone is my life. My Android and stuff, I like customizing it. Uh, yeah. I, I change the way it looked every day. Yeah. But, 
like you said, stability is the key there, dog. Like you can't customize an iPhone down to the core, but it just works. And it's not laggy and freezing, and it just fucking works. It is what it is, and and that's kind of the whole Mac. Lately, I've been more into Linux than anything, dude. I hadn't done much with Linux my whole life, but that's a little thing most motherfuckers don't even know of. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I've been putting Linux on everything and studying my uh, terminal commands and all my uh, command prompts. Yo. Yeah, uh, 20. Yeah, I got more time. <laughs> well, the old lady jumping in on you. Yeah, she's texted me about 32 times during this old thing here. She's just trying. That's every time I, if I took a breath, I was probably breathing while I did, looking, reading her text. <laughs> <laughs> well, now. Um, Do people listen to this live? Well, not. Well, we, you just put it up. Like, yeah. you, are you going to edit this? Yeah, Maybe yeah. T- take this out? <laughs> yeah, I'm going yeah, to chop it down. Yeah, okay. that's what I thought, because, uh, well, yeah, I, like I said, you'd have to tell me to stop a couple times. Yeah. No, but we'll, we'll, um, I, I know we, ha- I know how it is to have a missus and whatnot, but, um, you did bring up a point to when we was just kind of pre-chatting or whatever. You got a current project, you got a current track that, uh, you working on that you feel right. really passionate about and let us know what that is. Yeah. And like, uh, I did a lot of talking about my last project, The Awakening. The way the awakening ends, to me, in my mind, when I hear it, the way I created it, it's to be continued. And what it begins is the real me. And I talked about Lil Peep. I talked about, I, I kind of set myself up to right right for here, about where I kind of wanted to touch base, end off even for the moment. But we're going to have to do this again, I'll say that. Yeah. The real me, the focus there is, is the, the sad boys era I told about. That's that's new to all these people that are buying it, loving it, and shit. But we started doing that in 2005. We was doing these, uh, I ain't going to say sad songs, but emotional, you know, emotional songs. Uh, some of them even uh, uh, depressing. <laughs> we was doing that back in the day. They had real trippy uh, uh, production to them, sound effects, stuff like, you know, echoey. Uh, just trying to Im- mimic the, what the drugs made us see or hear, maybe, but whatever. And and the depression that we carried in our lives. And I've I've almost gone full tilt circle. Everything comes back right. Everything goes right around into it. The real me is is I'm I'm right back to that. And what I see that as or it translates into is I'm just writing the truth anymore. I started writing and making music for other people. And a lot of people have different ways of looking at this. Uh, make music for yourself, then keep it to yourself. Don't fucking put it out. If you're making music for you, then keep it to your motherfucking self. And 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 do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you don't don't put it out there. Yeah. Make music for others, then p- make it for others. Yeah. So yeah. anyways, then you yeah take two, pick it up. I hate to cut it off on short notice. Well, we've been at it about over an hour, ain't we? Hey. Yeah, yeah. An hour of me talking, dog. Shit. Yeah, yeah. The most important part of this whole thing is the the point of the real me, the point of looking at any of my music, man. You'll find something you can relate to at some, I promise you will, throughout it. The real me is me boiling back down to me as a person, how I live my life. And like I said, the awakening was the beginning of that, but I feel like I wrote that music just what was hot, what people wanted to hear, what I knew people were going to like, instead of just writing how I feel emotionally and putting my emotions on paper again. And that's what I'm back to, uh, just like the beginning of my music. And that's why it just came full tilt a circle. You know what I'm saying? Like back, back around to it. It just so happens that now it's a trend that Lil Peep really got famous and it got famous because, uh, he, he's now dead, like I said, but now he's blowing up. Uh, or he's getting bigger all the time and, and he's really hot right now. So, uh, I don't know. It's expanding on his end. And, uh, we, we, I say diamond, that guy I told you about diamond was the original sad boy to me, <laughs> but that's cause we made that, you know what I'm saying? That's how we just made music. We were just writing how we felt. And it turns out now it's fucking popular to do so to make these sad lovey dovey songs even like, you know, I don't know. Yeah. Well, man, I, I, but there's some amazing artists, and uh, that was my whole thing, man. Just shedding light on 
some of the talent that's out there, man. Because uh, yeah, don't don't box yourself in. There's some amazing shit out there. Yeah. Well, I know you uh, you strapped for time. We're gonna go ahead and wind. Brother, it down. we got to do this again. We're gonna have to call this one to be continued, just like my album was. Ma- matter of fact, I, I, that's what I labeled the episode when it come out. <laughs> Yeah, most definitely, brother. I hope I didn't ramble myself. Uh, um, next time, I'm going to have to let Rob do what he does best, ramble. <laughs> I've noticed the, any of them I've heard, though, you usually letting the other person just talk, have at it. Exactly. <laughs> you usually letting them I roll. Mean, that, that's what it is, man. That's what, and that's, that's good, though. You know what I'm saying? That's, all, that's awesome. Yeah, because it's like you, you it, it felt like you had a lot to get off your chest or whatever. So I, I'm glad I had the opportunity. And I'm to glad I that. finally got it out. I, I know I uh, re- retract back and fumbled over myself and kind of jumped here and there and whatever. But uh, I, I'd say I, I got out. I talked about just about most of the topics I wanted to, bro. And uh, yeah, you've been awesome, Rob. I really freaking appreciate you, man. And uh, we're going to set up another one. Hey, ASAP. Yeah. We might as well just work on the um, the, the three all mixtape or whatever. Me and you, we can just get some idea you need somebody to work with i ain't never made yeah if you tape. know anybody uh that you want to send to me merge with me uh or just link me up with me and uh, yeah right now i'm all about the networking well, man it, and I, fuck it, I long know. distance collaboration man it's it's really kind of easy i always thought you had to be personally with the person to collab but you don't yeah. fuck it i jump on the track with you I, I i'm bars. down bro we're gonna make it happen i know you got some gear over <laughs> yeah. but um before you go Rob, i appreciate you brother i yeah. really do and uh yeah, my mom, I'm getting this tape together. I'd like to do. I'd like to touch base with you when I release it and talk a little bit more about that once I got it officially set in stone. For sure. Before you go, let everybody know where they can find you on social media. Most definitely follow me. There's three names. I'm on all of the internet. Either <laughs> specifically uh, Instagram, y'all follow me. Rad's Productions. If you type Rad's Productions, I'm also on Facebook under that name. Uh, Infamous Rad is my TikTok, my Snapchat. All that stuff. Uh, again, check out my website. Anybody needs a, a, a real open box ended, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Whatever it is, graphics, website, marketing, and you're trying to take your brand to the next level, localwebsource.com for now. Uh, but, uh, but y'all can always email me, of course, uh, radsproductions at gmail. Uh, any beats, instrumentals you got out there. Uh, you know, if you're trying to actually clab up, man, shoot me, shoot it to me. Um, and I'm on all the platforms, man. Either Rad's Productions, Infamous Rad, or uh, Unrecited on some of them. But yeah, my main one's Infamous Rad and Rad's Productions. You'll find me out there. I'm all over. I got my head, and like I said, I'm involved in a little bit of everything, man. So. Got you. Well, as it Production's is, it's been great. Yeah, as it is with everyone, the door is always open for you to come back. And we already discussed that, so you will come back. But, I most um, definitely will. Uh, I'll see you next time, my friend. Awesome, brother. Have a good one. And that was the man, Rad, bro. Um, I, before um, I even get into what I'm gonna say and anything, just so you know, it's not that he was talking so much that I couldn't get in edgewise or whatever. It's just that you know um, the connection that we had was very delayed. So when he got really on to a tangent or something, I tried to get in there as best as I could. But, you know, with the delay, it, that was kind of hard for me to do. But nonetheless, I mean, he had plenty of to say and I was down for every minute of it. I, I had no qualms with what was going on. It was just <laughs> I didn't I knew that it didn't bother me per se, but it would have kind of came off as because you can hear me trying to get into the conversation. But he's just going and going and going and going and going. But, you know, it is what it is. And, you know, that's how it is when you try to record from Skype to someone's cell phone so if you ever have that setup going on just be mindful of that being an issue you have a slight delay between them talking and them hearing you and vice versa so i mean yeah i mean he ran the gamut of many of things i mean he went from being a meme to uh, abuser of drugs and freaking finder of technology and mastering the skills and you know now, now he's just you know out there crafting and creating follow him on tiktok whatever all that stuff is in the show description and everything so you can find all the social media accounts interact with the man he he looking for some people to do some music with baby so uh if you got some musical talents and whatnot you got some beats you want to shoot his way or you want to collab on some things you know hit him up so um I haven't done this in a long time. And um he alluded to a single that he was uh working on or that's out already that he um 
just dropped not too long ago. So you're going to have some bonus content at the end of this episode, baby. You're going to get to hear that song and, uh, you know, hit him up. Tell him what you think. You know, music is subjective. But, you know, what I would say, because I had a change of heart midway through uh, this podcast. What I mean, the longevity of this podcast is going on four years. I had a change of heart. Is this I don't tell people what they do sucks. I don't talk shit about nobody in their craft. You know, I I, I won't. It, it's weird to say because, like, I'll talk shit about wrestling, but, you know, everybody talks shit about wrestling. And, you know, I ain't talking down on the person per se, unless it's the motherfucking Undertaker current day. <laughs> but they are doing something that most of us aren't doing. And who are we not doing their craft to talk shit about what they're doing? If we think we can do it better, why don't we go do it better rather than to sit back armchair quarterback and criticizing motherfuckers? You know, we talk about mumble rap and all this other shit or whatever by this being garbage. But, you know, despite our bafflement and bafflement, I don't even know that's a word. I just made it, I just made it up besides how confused we are about how this music gets made. Regardless of the fact it is getting made and they are getting paid, you know, so they are doing something to make revenue. You are just bitching and complaining and ain't making shit. And if you feel that you can do it better, why don't you lay down a track, you know, put you some bars out there and make you some money. Stop, you know, raining on other people's shit because you ain't and can't do it. Sorry, motherfucker. <laughs> but anyway. Words of wisdom, words to live by. Thanks. I done had them all on there now. So I had the whole infamous society. I done had Mr. Catastrophic. I done had Rad. I done had Anomaly. And you hear Anomaly here and there on freaking um wrestling this trash. And um so, yeah, maybe one day we can get all three of them. Maybe we can get the whole infamous society on for, you know, maybe we can get a, a reunion tour on the Random Rounds with Rob. We can do some live music <laughs> and shit. You can do some freestyles and whatever. Ain't nobody been making me no intros uh, for the show no more. Usually somebody come up with some creative things and whatnot. If you're interested in making an intro for the show, you know, hit me up on the email at random robcast at outlook.com. Or you can shoot something to the voicemail line. That is 304-825-825. 5762. You can shoot me a text. It's just a voicemail line. So you can leave a voicemail. You can shoot me a text. You can't call me on that number. Um, also, you know, my birthday is in March. So you got to get used to that voicemail line, baby, because um, it's going to be Ask Miss B Rob season. You get to send in any kind of question that you want to ask her, and she'll answer it just for you. And, you know, as a gift to me for my birthday, you know, this will be the third, third annual. Or the fourth annual, the four years of the show. So four, yeah, this will be the fourth annual Ask Miss B Rob. January is the anniversary of the show. It'll be going four years strong, baby. But yeah, cool. Um, just wrapped up the pandemic tour. Today is Sunday as I record. We just got back not too long ago. I got to sit in on the panel with uh, Seth Rollins and Becky Lynch. And, uh, it was cool. My kids got to go up and ask them questions and whatnot. I had the video for that. It'll be on my Instagram. And uh, wherever else I decide to post that, look out on the new YouTube page. That is a three hour show. Look for me there and I'll have uh, clips and footage from what I got on the, uh, you know, just on the showroom floor and just running around and everything. So, yeah, cool weekend. Kids got to get out the house. I got to get out the house, walk like three blocks because I didn't want to pay for the NRG parking. I found some cheaper parking down the way. (laughs) But it was a good time. Thank you to the staff and crew and, you know, affiliates of the pandemic tour for giving me opportunity to go there and be a part of your press and media. And um, if you come through again, I'll be glad to, you know, drop by your shindig again. Anyway, find the show on Twitter at 3R Show. Find me on Twitter at it's B Rob I T S B R O B. So you can hit me up on that avenue of approach. You can find me on the Instagram. Use the hashtag three R show or the hashtag Walmart log. You can watch me walking through Walmart. I just left from there so I can come finish up this episode and get it put out to the public. Um, you can also 
Find me in the club. Bottles for the bub. You know, got what you need. A little bit of the bubbly. <laughs> uh, shout outs to Chris Jericho. And uh, yeah, go to randomrobcast.com to where you can find many different ways to help support the show. And that's about it. The best way that you can help support this podcast and any podcast that you listen to is write those five star reviews. Go on iTunes or wherever you listen to your podcast that has a rating system and leave them the highest review possible. Those go a long way and I would appreciate it if you can help me out. Matter of fact, I'm right now I'm sitting at going on four years and I only got 57 reviews, which, you know, is kind of a lot regardless, but I want to hit a hundred. Can y'all help me with that? Pretty please. I'm I'm gonna put the campaign out there. I'm gonna, uh, I want to try to get to a hundred reviews by the time the Ask Miss B Rob uh, podcast comes out. So you got from now till March 29th. March 29th is the drop dead that I would like to try to get 100 reviews on iTunes or wherever you have it. If you do it anywhere other than iTunes. Uh, send me a screenshot, but I would prefer that uh, we get it on iTunes or whatever. I know everybody ain't got an Android device. Uh, ooh, ugh. yeah, that's hard to say. I mean, I know everybody doesn't have an Apple device, but um, help out any way you can. And uh, yeah, that's it. I'm done. Uh, thank you, Rad, for being on the show, and uh, thank you all for listening. And I'll see you next time. Bonus content. Yeah, 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 they know I'm about that. Uh, My whole life been some nonsense partying way too hard. Shit every night, every morning, regardless. Door, door. <laughs> Cause if there is one thing that I've learned You cannot show your love with friends They say I'm a star Come My whole life had a buzz So I like the things I do But I like my nerves And got more fun for me to have Yeah, I like every single one One, every one In the book I've tried probably more than once I see the strings And it's probably stick my name up Out the mud I might hit out first time